So, first, let me describe how I've spent the last three summers. I live in Ohio, be a camp counselor at the Inwoods Camp in the Hawking Hills region of Southern Ohio. Clear Creek Valley is one of the most biodiverse areas in the entire world, not kidding. More than some rainforests, the nearest civilization is the town of Rockbridge Tiny, many miles away. Everyone lives in cabins with no air conditioning, power, or lights. I'm assigned to the older bows because I'm better with the bushcraft, teach them batoning, fired building, debris huts, edible plants, etc. One night every week, we camp out, use our skills, and sleep under the stars. Every week, each cabin has to do a camp improvement project chores. Little kids pull weeds on the few and peft. Darely maintain pots we have. Big kids 14 to 17 use saws, rakes, and shovels to clear out new campsites or refurbish old ones. There's always been a rivalry between the older boys and girls, especially among the counselors. That's the camp. It's a nice place. I'm there for six weeks every summer, but the kids only stay for one week sessions after three years of romping through the forests there. I know the place like the back of my hand. There are still some places I haven't been, but they are few and far between. As a side note, Every counselor has a camp name, so campers can't find us on Facebook and stuff. I'm Hawkeye. My friends in the story are Turkey is certified EMT and my co-counselor, Magenta an old friend and engineering student, and Khaleesi a business student. Magenta and Khaleesi are counselors for the older girls, and Turkey and I are counselors for the older boys. It was the last week of camp. Everyone is happy to be going home. What camp improvement projects don't get done have to be done by counselors after camp is done. But before they can leave, screw that. Turkey, Magento, Khaleesi, and I all agreed to have our kids do all of the hard chores so we don't have to do them alone. We clean up a campsite on the side of a hill called Black Feather. The girls clean up a site called Human Nature. They're bragging because it hasn't been used in around 20 years camp, is 90 plus years old and we will finally get it up and going again. I'm a bit jealous because I've never been to that site. The only clue as to where it is is a dotted line on a 30-year-old hand-drawn map indicating a shitty trail. Magenta says she knows where it is. I think she's bluffing, but she's a smart girl. I figure if anyone could find it, it'd be her. Next day, head to Black Feather. Find a box tortoise and explain tortoise versus turtle. A tree has fallen right on the campsite. Go, go, gadget saw. Fifteen teenage bows attacked the fallen tree approximately one foot diameter with hacksaws. That bitch didn't know what hit it. Show them how to split wood. Black feathers will have firewood for many years. Return to camp. Now it's time to select overnight spots. Magenta has a smug grin on her face, looks me in the eye, and says, We're going to human nature. What do you think about that? Never been there. Where is it? It's in the valley, a new part of the forest. We found where the fire ring was, but all the rocks were scattered about. That's weird. Not really. Walks away. Turkey comes up to me and says that he let a younger cabin take a black feather, as it's not too far a hike for them. Where are we staying? Tatanka. I was very excited because there is a very cool clearing right by Tatanka, perfect for astronomy. It's right on top of a hill, so it's a tough hike, but that makes the food taste so much better. Next day, overnight day. 15 bows plus to counselors, we made hamburgers on a grate that we carried up. 7 pounds of meat to divide. We ate like kings. Campfire jacks for dessert. Basically, it is a tin full wrap tortilla with chocolate and marshmallow inside. The person who packed the food gave us no tortillas. I'm fine with going without. But some of the guys were looking forward to them. Don't worry guys. I'll just pop over to another campsite and see if they had extras. Quietly to Turkey. Where are? The other campsites. I have heard the girls from downhill all evening, but I don't know where they are. I don't know man, his first year of counseling, but Magenta said human nature was in the valley. Did you see that ragged trail leading downhill when we were headed up? Like 20 meters past the last cabin. I did see it, but it didn't look like it had been used recently. You sure that's right? Yeah. Man, that's where the trail is on the map. It is around the right area, but the map even has written on it, not to scale. Some sites may be overgrown. All right, man, that's about right. I go down toward the trail, approximately 9.30 p.m. So it's dark, I got a whistle. My Mora companion blade baits in white ash, so it works on demons and a headlamp. Get to trailhead, it's a bit dark, but not so much that it's oppressive. 
I head into the trail, about 5 meters in, it suddenly turns from undergrowth to grass underfoot. This is odd. All the undergrowth is getting thinner too, but the path is still very defined for something 20 years old. Suddenly, no undergrowth, just trees. Eerie. Almost brightness, I don't even need my headlamp. It's a new moon, so this is weird. The section of forest I'm in looks very new. Thin trees, low ground cover. No bushes or mid-level plants, the feeling I get from it. Though, it feels old. Like walking inside a tomb. I keep walking. More to distract myself from how weird this section of forest is. I realize that I don't hear the girls anymore. They're normally very loud. Being teenage girls, I stop. Everything in the world stops around me. Not even insects are chirping. I see fog slowly filling the valley. It's now bright in there. Despite being a new moon, this place is not goat. I'm actually getting goosebumps describing it. A stream runs down the center of the valley. Shallow, but still a stream. I don't know why, because every fiber of my being said otherwise, but I continued on the path, crossing the stream. Once I crossed, a wave of the most powerful feeling hit me one. I can't even articulate to people. The best way I can describe it is like feeling with every ounce of your body that something is the most despicable evil that has ever existed. This place was bigger than me, bigger than the forest. I should not be there. I was more scared than anything, since there was nothing to fight about. I ran further down the path. I don't know why the first did IT. Every step carried me further into it, but I couldn't stop. It felt like I had run at least a mile or two, but it was probably no more than a few hundred meters. I'm not afraid of admitting that I was almost in tears at this point. It's so much easier, and there's something to focus your fear on. But when there's nothing, it just takes over. Suddenly, off the side of an increasingly dispersing path, glow of a campfire, sound of girls talking in low voices, stumble towards the campsite. Magenta's voice is much shakier than normal. Hello? Who's there? I try to be as calm as possible to avoid spooking the campers although I realize that they are already unsettled as it is. H. Hey Magenta. It's Hawkeye. I'm coming out of the bush. Oh. Good. What do you need? I'd totally forgotten what I was there for. Just popping by. Cool. She says, then gestures for me to come over to her, away from the campers. Hawkeye, what are you doing? Was that you? Where did you come from? Why are you here? I was getting something. Wait, was it me? What do you mean? Where did I come from? You took that path, right? She looked me in the eye. And for a second, I saw the same look that must have been on my face minutes earlier. When I realized what I was feeling, she shook her head just slightly, and I could feel the color drain from my face. This was a bad idea, Hawkeye. What are you going to do? She told me how it felt much safer at the campsite with the fire going. She certainly wasn't going to lead them out through the forest in the dark. Khaleesi was also new and didn't know how to get anywhere. So it was up to Magenta. She said she'd stay up all night and tend the fire, keep the flames hot and large. I looked her in the eye and asked her if she'd be okay. She said yes, but didn't sound convinced. I remembered why I was there and grabbed some extra tortillas, because, damn it, I'm not going to go home empty-handed. Magenta shows me the path they took, old, but completely different from my ingress route. She told me how it felt much safer at the campsite with the fire going. She certainly wasn't going to lead them out through the forest in the dark. Khaleesi was also new and didn't know how to get anywhere, so it was up to Magenta. She said she'd stay up all night and tend the fire, keep the flames hot and large. I looked her in the eye and asked her if she'd be okay. She said yes, but didn't sound convinced. I remembered why I was there and grabbed some extra tortillas, because, damn it, I'm not going to go home empty-handed. Magenta shows me the path they took, old, but completely different from my ingress route. Hey Hawkeye. Where have you been? Did you walk all the way back to the kitchen? Ha ha ha. I realize it's like an hour and a half later, uh, yeah, the girls didn't have any. Come up. Let the older woes take over teaching the younger ones how to make campfire jacks. Pull turkey aside. The girl said tortillas. What? Don't ever go to human nature. There's something else in that forest. What do you mean? I have him look me in the eye. He sees that I'm not joking. Turkey. It is not a good area of forest. Never go there. Okay, man. I won't. We go to bed. But I can't sleep in my hammock. 
I kept having dreams about the forest, the next day, wake up, have campers rekindle the fire since it burned down, 10 cakes on the griddle we hauled up, clean up the site, pack, head back to camp, get equipment put away and send campers to Turkey to get showers and stuff. Magenta pulls me aside outside the dining hall, but away from campers, she has bags under her eyes, obviously from lack of sleep. Hawkeye, did you sleep last night? Not well, I kept having dreams. About the forest? Yet. Yeah. Hawkeye, if I tell you something, do you promise you'll believe me? You felt it, you know what it was like. Sure. Magenta, go ahead. Every girl either talked in their sleep last night or woke up crying at some point in the night. We didn't eat breakfast, we just got out of there. Every girl? Every damn girl. I swear to you. I heard them, I didn't sleep a second. I was tending the fire. I don't know what would have happened if it had gone out. Okay. Magenta, it's okay. I believe you. That's about it. Go home for days later. I don't know what the hell it was, but that's it. Sorry for the long post. I'll compile it into one big image and post it next time. Oh. On the master map, which is a hand-painted contour lines and everything map on a wooden board, which all the other maps are based upon. There is a red smudge between the path to human nature and the last cabin, right where my path would be. I kid you not. I think someone had a double meaning when they named the campsite human nature. Whenever I think of human nature as a concept, I think of conflict, war, hatred, and violence. The first person to find the campsite gets to name it. But nobody I've asked knows who founded human nature. It's just always been there. I'll never go back. Camp is a wonderful place that has a special meaning to me. But human nature is something entirely different. Dude, I know that feeling. I went through old brickwork near my house. Rumor has it that some kid got stabbed in the tunnels, and as soon as you step into them, you have that feeling of instant dread. You feel as if your body is being gently squeezed by some other force. Weird stuff. Exactly. Trying to articulate it to someone who hasn't felt it is impossible. You need to feel fear inherent to the place. It's everywhere. I can't ever go back. Magenta won't even talk about it. She yells at me whenever I bring it up. We've been close friends for years, but she won't talk about this. Hey, stalker. Hope you enjoyed the video. If I could trouble you, give a like and a sub. It really helps the cause. And since you're already here, why not watch the next video? Anyways, stay comfy. Cortisol is bad for you.